What's going on everybody? It's ASIC Eric here, back in the garage. I um, haven't seen me on camera for in a while. I've been kind of hiding because I'm getting fat. My hair sucks because of this dang quarantine. But we'll be getting a haircut soon and then we'll be happy. So that'll be good. So we are back on the Camaro today. Alrighty, so uh, today we are going to venture forth into some further electrical stuff. Uh, I'm going to clean up this mess in here first, um, but we're going to get the computer in here, um, hopefully power it on, see if it works with no bad things happening. And we might spelunk around a little bit in this wiring harness and figure out what we're doing, but we shall see. Um, but first order of business, let me clean up this mess in here so we can get started for real. All right, so uh, cleaned out the driver's side here. I didn't bother doing the passenger side, but so get an idea what's going on here. So you can see the main harness comes through the firewall right here. So we've got all of these guys. Um, hopefully I can tuck the wires up under here. But you know, the idea is mount this guy here somewhere. Um, not sure how far down I can go before it's going to be a problem, so I want to kind of keep it up here as much as I can. So it really just depends on how much I can tuck those wires there. Uh, so let's try and get an idea of what we're up against here. Uh, figure out which one's which. So this is the, the shorty here. color-coded okay yes yeah so black one goes here in theory okay black goes there and gray goes there there you go now how much tucking can we do? Get it to about right there, I think. That's pretty nice. Pretty happy with that. I'm not gonna, well, I might mount it right now, I'm not sure. Um, I got a couple of little rubber standoff things for it. Um, let me go get those, show you what I'm talking about. So the only problem with these is they're gonna make it stick up even further. Um, and I'm not sure might be able to make that work but um let me know what you guys think um is it worth putting these isolators under here is there an issue just mounting this straight to the car you know, for shock absorption right um i don't know so i'll defer on that for now um, but that's nice that that actually fits there so that's good um so what we want to do now is figure out how we can get power applied to this thing without getting power applied to everything else. Because uh, you can see here, the main car harness is not done. So we have potential short circuits all over the place here. So we don't want to put any power on this guy. Um, from the controller on the other side, if you can see this. Uh, so this is the Ignition switch to turn on the ECU. Uh, this is the gas pedal right here. Um, there should be another one coming in here. There's the MIL check engine light. So we need to hook these up, um, but not all this other stuff. So let me show you. Uh, here. Oh, the OD ODB2. OBD2 um, here, which they call DLC for some reason. So all of this stuff's got to get connected. Um, I have a little Bluetooth um, OBD2 thing that I got for my Flex. I'm going to plug that in there and hopefully you can see the thing light up when it's on. So I got all of that stuff there. Let me show you uh, what's going on under the hood. All right, so under the hood, the main battery comes in under here. 
which goes down to the starter, etc. Um, there's a line that comes up here that goes over to the main, uh, the painless wiring harness, and there's a fuse in there, which I think is not there, but if not, I'll pull it out. Um, that will keep power from here going into the main harness. So all of this stuff over here will be unenergized. Uh, the alternator won't be energized, um, but everything connected to this box will be. So the fan controller, um, that's basically it right now is the fan controller. So let me verify that that fuse is out. And then in theory, we should be able to apply um, power to that without anything blowing up. But I'll, I'll start by measuring the resistance from power to ground and make sure it looks copacetic. Okay. So I did verify that fuse is not connected. Let's see. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not here. Let's see. I don't like the little flip screen on this camera. It's like if you tilt it up just a little bit from an angle, it flips back to the other direction, which I don't like. Whatever. Can you see that? Maybe. All right, so we're going to go to the block, which is ground to the power circuit. And we have six mega ohms. So that's a whole lot of ohms. So there's no short circuit there. Um, I can check a couple of the other circuits here that's open this is probably the fan controller a couple of these here those don't have anything in them that's good that's the number of kilo ohms so I don't see anything that looked suspect there so and go ahead and put power on that and hopefully nothing goes kaboom. I got my battery down here on the floor. Put this guy on the ground connection. That's not a very good ground connection. I don't have a battery connected yet, so find a good way to get a clamp on there. There you go. Okay, check for sparks. Okay, that's good. No sparks. Okay, so I have power on there now and nothing bad is happening. Put this on DC. See that we have voltage. 12 volts. Check these guys. Twelve volts. Interesting. This has no voltage on it. Oh, that's okay. Never mind. That makes sense. That's the hot leg. Okay, so we got twelve volts coming through. All right, so let's get the. Uh, little starter box wiring thing that we did to uh, get this thing powered up. All right, there's not been a lot worth filming here, so it's been kind of working on stuff here. So this is a little distribution block I bought a long time ago. Um, so this wire here runs up to that fuse relay box under the hood, um, which will have a 50 amp fuse on it. You can uh, break out different things here. So this is the power circuit for a little test box, ground, and then this ground I just ran to the chassis right here should be good. And we're not going to be pulling a lot of current through the ground here, so it'll be okay. Um, so now, so these guys have um, quick disconnects on them for the uh, test box. So that's ready. So now we basically have to find everything that we need to connect to the box, which is um, basically the power... And the check engine light, I think, is all we need to check for now. Um, that should do it. All right, we got everything wired up here. I've uh, got my fuse ready to go in. It's not in yet. Uh, for those of you commenting on the last box, I got my label maker out and labeled these things. I <laughs> just ran out of label tape. 
which is funny. So I got those on. Uh, fuel pump power here, starter here, not connected to anything. I got the ignition switch connected to the uh, the well the engine harness. Um, check engine light here, MIL connected to the check engine light. Um, so I'm gonna go put power on the main harness up there again, the fuse box. There's no power here, so just make sure everything's okay. Then I'll come back here and plop the fuse in. Make sure this thing turns on, nothing bad happens. That's interesting. I don't think I can explain that. So the power light turned on here, but I don't have a fuse in there. So how does that work? There's nothing going on here. So everything looks okay. So we put this in, the fuse doesn't blow. Which it didn't. We got power there. And it looks okay. So if I press this button, theoretically we should hear a relay click and nothing else. How about that? All right. No fire, no smoke. All right, let's get the uh, ODB2 Bluetooth thing out and see what happens. All right, we're off to a good start. Um, this guy's clicking and going, doing its thing. Um, we've got 12.3 volts on the battery, so that's good. Um, Monitors, a whole bunch of reds on here that need to be looked at. Car's never been started, so that might be correct. It says the MIL is on, but I don't have the light on here, so I'm not sure about that. It's connected, but I don't have any power there, so that, that I'm not sure about, unless that's active low, which would be weird. Um, so yeah, it works. So the ECU, ECM, whatever, is all happy. Everything looks good here, so this thing's ready to fire. Um, no, I'm not starting it right now. We still have more work to do. Um, Got to finish up the fuel lines and some other things, but that's pretty cool to see that up and running. Um, so that light there, I'm still not quite sure what that means, but I think it's it's to detect the fuse is bad. So like it, I don't know, it's detecting a load or something on here, and I'm not sure how that works, but whatever. Um, so yeah, pretty soon, hopefully, we'll get to see some good stuff in here. Um, I'm hoping I can see oil pressure on here somewhere. Uh, let's see, and, oh, is there anything else here? Oh, there you go. Uh, O2 oh, sensors, boost, there's no boost on this boy. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're off to a good start here. So I think that's going to do it for today. I'll go ahead and post this. Um, let me know what you guys think, uh, especially about mounting that thing, if I should put that up on the isolators or not. Um, and yeah, and then uh, we got to get this thing mounted here somewhere someday. The idea, hopefully, was this goes here, this thing goes right here, and I also have to mount this thing somewhere too. That's the uh, reverse lockout thing for the T56. So, anyway, I'm going to unplug this thing before I short something out and blow it up. So, thanks everybody. Take it easy. We'll catch you on the next one.